to talk about Berghain. Berghain have released their December 2023 um, lineup and it looks pretty cool. The big one for me, which I'm considering actually going to, is the one on December, which one is it here? December the 9th. It's actually their 19th anniversary. Can you believe that? 19 years of Berghain slash Panorama is happening on Saturday the 9th of December. Now, usually I would say that I try to avoid these occasions, right? I've said it before plenty of times, but the special occasions at Berghain are crazy. Like the last time I went to one, it was the Club Sylvester that happened in like maybe June, July or something. Or maybe it was February, whenever it was. There was one that happened previously this year. Um, maybe not the one before last. Maybe it was the one before last. It was the one that they made up for. I think they, they couldn't do it at the time they were going to do it. Then they kind of did it in the middle of the year. I went to that one. And let me tell you, that's the longest I've ever had to wait to go into Bergen ever in my life. And I think, embarrassingly enough, I'm going to tell you this right now. Don't tell anybody. I waited for four hours. Yes, four fucking hours. And to be fair, it might have been longer. I'm not really sure. But one thing that I can excuse myself for was that I was there by myself. I got there quite early and the queue was relatively short. It just filled up really quickly unfortunately like i think when i joined the queue it was just by the little um the little fucking portable spatty guy and then you know it didn't really move much within those kind of four hours it was just i wasn't even that far i wasn't like super super far back behind i was basically just as the grav where the gravel starts where you're about to queue and then um obviously because it's a celebration people were you know jumping the queue the guest's queue was also super big but it was just one of those times where it was just really full inside it just wasn't easier to kind of wait and it got so bad that um for the first time in a long time i saw the bouncers actually walk down the queue and start shouting out hey it's only one in one out we're at capacity see now blah, blah 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 but obviously you know if you're experienced driver you know what the deal you don't listen to that sort of shit you just sit there and let the you know newbies or people that are pissed off to go and then that leaves you more chance to get in i eventually did get in and i had a fucking whale of a time but it needs to be said that if you're somebody that goes to Berghain or wants to go to Berghain, you would know that these special events are usually very hit and miss but for me I think this might be a hit. Why? Because it's in December and it's not during the summer because usually the summer events, whether it's um the Berlin, the May Day, whether it's, uh, what you call it, uh, Berlin Pride and a few other things, they're usually in the summer months where everyone kind of goes and they get a bit too crazy. There's probably too many tourists there, too many normies as well. I don't think it's just a tourist because the tourists get a bad rap um, for ruining the vibe in Bergheim, but I think it's also just a normie crowd of people in Germany and in Berlin anyway who just want to go there because, you know, they've got great fucking train, um, you know, uh, systems and whatever it may be services sorry they've got train good train services across mainland europe um especially in other parts of germany you can easily get to berlin within an hour um if you live near a nearby city and stuff so there's plenty of people that go there just to party during the summer so of course they are on it and they're having a good vibe so sometimes they can go there and a bit too steamy and kind of ruin the vibe of the place and stuff so it can be weird in the summer but i think this 19th anniversary of it being in december it might be a hit because if i've you know from what i've been able to gather checking on the my favorite flipping subreddit and all subreddits the bergen community subreddit from what i've been able to gather from some of the reports on people because they always do these really good little updates on people posting um their experience in there how long the queue is blah 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 blah. they got bounced and from what i've been able to surmise ever since maybe the end of october the mood and the kind of vibe in there has changed considerably and if you would have seen threads that were posted from like february on to like you know september you would have seen definitely people complaining about the vibe and um, some people even saying that it's too straight nine burger and all this sort of stuff right but now you're seeing people actually say no nah, they're enjoying um going out there a lot more and i think that's probably something that could apply to the whole of berlin too because obviously when i go there i'm just going to one club i'm going to fucking all the clubs right oxy rso um you know aiden and um, watergate trezor it doesn't matter i'm going to all of them right every everything every every toilet i'm going into something's gonna get sniffed so <laughs> i'm doing that right so i think i'm definitely gonna go for this 19th anniversary one in december because it has a bit of a interesting day again like i said because it's on december to have that kind of a timing go in there and of course the lineup is fucking killer right so 19th of um sorry the 9th of december 19th anniversary you got absolute plane amx you got ben clock um you got best the best hero ds devious one um, devious one has been getting an interesting kind of bit of reviews online um i've seen some people comparing him 
a lot to like the Freddie K phenomenon because a lot of people from Bergheim like eulogize Freddie K. I still haven't been convinced. I still think he's a bit overrated. Personally, in my opinion, I think he's a bit overrated. I haven't heard a closing Bergheim set from Freddie K. I haven't seen him play in Berlin at his home turf. I know. I've already got the experience of seeing him play in E1 and playing in Fold. And also, you know, live streams, right? That's the only experience I've got. And from what I've been able to gather so far, a bit overrated for me, in my personal opinion. And I think DVS ones get a similar sort of treatment. And a lot of people are saying that, you know, the hype maybe, you know, is a little bit over overdone. But I'm interested to see him regardless, because again, the times that I've seen him, DVS one play, he's definitely impressed me. He impresses me more than Freddie K. If that has to be said. Luke Slate has been having an absolute tear in Bergheim recently. I think. I think like every other month he's already playing there, so big up him. So that's to be great to see him as well. Marcel Dietman will be nice, and it's called Nymed is also playing. But the best for me is definitely the Panorama Bar. Might be actually better than the Bergheim Bar. Uh, Bergheim lineup. Sorry. In Panama, you got Arm from Intervision playing. You got Gerd Jansen. You got Martellus Pittman, Natalie Robinson. You got Ogazon, who's somebody that I kind of discovered more so through Hor. Um, so big up her. That'd be sick to see her play there. You got Roman Flugel. That'd be sick to see him play there. Um, you got Stacy Hotwax Hale and Virginia. So that'd be sick. And then in Hale room, you got Dasha Rush playing live, which would be sick. I'm not really seeing what her live sets look like or what that sound would sound like. You got um Nazanin Nori. You got at can be marco shuttle shape and noise and then in saw you got a person called Disius playing live but this is a really really good lineup to check out so i'm definitely um keeping my eye off in that one and definitely gonna go check out to see it and if i can go and enjoy and have a good time because that'll be a good one as well to get out of my system before the new year because i don't usually party during the new year anyway um that's not something i've done in a very very long time so this might be a good way to kind of like kill two birds with one stone where you can go and party during that like, kind of close enough to the new year it'll also be bitterly cold in berlin and i love it when it's cold i don't know why but i fucking love it when a big parka like you know, pull out my fucking veteran thing um long long coats like big boots you know what i mean like i love that fucking weather actually i think i love it more so because if i'm not mistaken the weather obviously it's really cold in berlin but you know you know how, what the vibe is in berlin when it's cold but also i don't know because the usually the cloakrooms are really cheap the clubs are really warm and everyone's fucking sweating off their faces on drugs or drinking and shit. You can afford to just go into the club just with a massive coat and wearing a t-shirt and a vest underneath and then just leave, you know, in the morning and stuff and you're perfectly fine. So I love that ability of just not having to take too much shit with me, you know? Um, not, you know, thinking about the rain or whatever. So just kind of going in there, boom, and then kind of going out. So I'm really, 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 really eager to go. So I can't really wait to check that out, uh, to be honest. So big up, Bergheim. Um, 90th anniversary happening very, very soon. And of course, the rest of December lineup is also out but they haven't updated um the lineups yet about the what you call it for the new year's eve and new year's day basically party it's more new year's day party but yeah they haven't updated that one lineup that i thought was really interesting and kind of maybe is a sign of i wouldn't say a sellout or maybe toy tonic is going in an interesting direction because toy tonic as i mentioned before were one of the best parties i've discovered maybe in recent years and obviously a label and everything else in between but this collaboration they've got with Spandu 20 happening on the 22nd of December is really interesting because it seems like it's a purposeful, you know, pivot because the parties are ramping up. It seems that they're doing a party every single fucking weekend when you check their Instagram account, right? You get nothing but utter FOMO from their account. But also this link up with Spandu might be the beginning of the end. As much as I love Toy Tonics, like, you know, when you collaborate with Fiac and all these Mandem, you know, underneath and stuff, it's not, it's only going to go one way. And you know what the Spandu crowd is like, you know, I don't think most people would want to go to those type of parties willingly. So it's a shame to see Toy Tonics go in that direction. And it kind of makes me respect more, you know, Gerd Jansen's decision with running back to not really turn it into it. Because I think Gerd Jansen could have easily turned running back into a Toy Tonics or whatever. Or even people, or even a group like Public Possession, who've been kind of, you know, low key, doing everything kind of small and stuff and not really blowing up too much. Um, you kind of have to give those guys a lot of respect because I feel like Toy Tonics have got, you know, they've kind of grown massively over the last 18 months months and now they've got to a point where they're doing collab parties with spandu um in burger and in panorama bar which again you know lineup is sick and stuff i get it but it just feels like to me this might be the beginning of the end so i'm um, shame to see that but apart from that we haven't really got any dates for the new year's day 
events just yet so keep an eye out for that if you are that way indeed inclined but for me so far of course it has to be that 90th anniversary december as well there won't be much tourists around like myself or normies so it'll be great to go there and have a good time and wait out so again cannot wait to go cannot wait to go